Hello, everyone. Welcome to What's Going On Inside Japan. This is actually our third episode, so if you miss the first two episodes, you could always go back and watch that after you watch this. There's no particular order or anything, so I think we should just go ahead and get started. So, the first story that I have today is actually coming out of、um, Sado, a city called Sado. It's actually in Niigata. Okay. Okay. And what they're doing is they're actually. Giving people money to have a third child. Okay. So, do you know how much they're giving? Um, you know, I think I saw some may have been this story.、Mm-hmm. And if I'm not mistaken, I thought it was a pretty big number. Is it $20,000? It's about $20,000, yeah. So it's 2 million yen. And the way they're doing this is actually pretty smart. They give you some money. When the child is born, some, some more money when the child is six years old, and then tw- again at 12, and then 15. So the total of all that will be 2 million. Yeah, I think in Japan, a lot of cities offer subsidies of about $100 a month. So that kind of equals the $20,000 price that you're talking. But would this be on top of what they're already giving, or they're just saying in our town, your child will get this 2 million yen? This 2 million yen. So I'm pretty sure it's just in that town, but then who knows? There might be some things extra because、uh, you don't get this full amount if you only have two children. It has to be the third child or fourth or. Anything after the third child. So, this is a bonus for having a larger family. Exactly. So, they're not just trying to have people just only stop at two children and then keep, you know, keep the numbers the same. They want to grow. And so, I thought it was a really nice incentive. Yeah, I mean, you, de- you have a decreasing population here. You know, it's about 127 million and slowly shrinking. So, the limited immigration has led to this decrease in population. You know, so kids today are going to have a large number of older people to support. So,、um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, yeah. It's, it's definitely something worth trying to change. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Especially someplace outside of Tokyo. Because Tokyo, you, you wouldn't imagine if, you, if anybody stayed in Tokyo, you, it would not be like, hey, this is like the population's declining. No, you feel like you're、in、like. A bustling city. Exactly. Communities, smaller communities are slowly dwindling. Exactly. Rural areas. Yeah, they're. There have been some other pushes to get people outside the city. At one time, there's a program like, we'll give you $5,000 to leave Tokyo. <laughs> Just here's some get out money. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I thought that this was an interesting story to share.、Um, some incentives that people might not know about.、Um, like, as you mentioned, certain cities have certain things. It's just another city doing another thing to get people in. And to increase the family size. So, all right. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. That's the end of our first story. Okay, so we're on to our next story. This next story happens, I'm not exactly sure exactly where it happens, but from my understanding, it's either in Aichi or near Aichi Prefecture. So, this man's car was stolen. The thieves still haven't been caught yet, but he actually saw the theft happening. So he was in his apartment. He couldn't get down, but he did record the whole theft happening. And for those who don't know and want to know, it was the RX7、uh, FD. So <laughs> just letting the viewers who are interested in the type of car know. But yeah, so he actually witnessed the theft happening. He was yelling from the win- window and just like telling him not to steal the car, but he still rec- he recorded everything. Then he posted it on Twitter. 
so this actually made news and everything that like he actually you know got robbed and for some people this might be surprising that uh theft actually does happen in japan japan even though it's a nice place and safe place to live crime still does happen here and there but yeah so he ended up going to twitter posting on twitter and people online actually helped him find his car because it was actually recovered so i think this is like sometimes we have like the bad things of the internet but then this is something good that comes out of the internet especially i know twitter sometimes has a lot of negative press <laughs> but i think in this case it was used for good and they were able to find his car within a few days and with very minimal damage so i thought it was just a interesting story to share um yeah you know japan has a very low crime rate specifically violent crime but you know so people like being robbed at knife point gunpoint is very uncommon here but having your house burgled like that that's definitely possible so you know being carjacked isn't going to happen in japan but your car being stolen at night from your parking space is possible um yeah so if you had a honda civic type r or you know a kind of a, a little bit more desirable sports car it's kind of rare you know most people assume we're such a safe place so when it does happen, it's uh, a bit of a surprise for the people involved, but it's more common than you might think. Um, did they recover it from, you know, this from the streets or from a car shop or being sold online? Do you know where it was? It was. Uh, I know they rec they recovered it north of where it was stolen. It, they think they said it was about twelve and a half miles north of where it was stolen. It was, I think, in a parking lot because it seemed like the thieves ab abandoned it because they saw that it was getting all this online attention ah. which also makes it harder to sell and get rid of it yeah. so I, I think a lot of these cars would probably be chopped up for parts or resold or shipped overseas but okay well that's great that they didn't get away with it yeah so this one i think it was just since it got so much attention they're like it's not worth it let's just leave it at that makes sense so yeah i thought this was just a interesting story kind of another slightly dark side of japan but then at the same time with a good ending that's great okay so that's the end of that story so <laughs> do we have a third story we actually do have a third story so I was thinking about your dog when this happened. Okay. So a lamp post fell. Okay. I don't know if you heard about this. Mm, I did. <laughs> okay. So. News. Japanese shocking news. Yeah. So, yeah. So over over time, usually lamp posts like usually last or street traffic lights last about fifty years, and then they kind of replace it from then. This one lasted twenty three years. And for the viewers who don't know, this lamppost fell because of dog urine. Constant, repeated, uh, you know, attempts for dogs marking their territory. After 23 years of this, corrosion happened and yeah, <laughs> something I did not think could happen. Well, did not think that would happen happened so yeah the police actually noticed this because they noticed a lot of dog walkers <laughs> passing by and then like it just seemed like wait there's something suspicious so they not only tested the lamppost but the floor around it and they found that it was like many more times urine <laughs> of urine the percentage of urine was like way above average compared to other places so yeah so needless to say the police encourage dog owners to have their dogs relieve themselves 
at either close to home where there isn't a lamppost or things like that? Yeah, um, you know, in Japan, you know, a lot of people, if they have a picnic, you know, they make a mess, they bring the mess. People are expected to clean up after themselves. So it was suggested to me that when the dog urinates, you have water and you dilute the urine. You clean the urine. I don't know if that's common for dog walkers in the U.S., but that may be a, a very Japanese habit. I did not know about that habit. So. Yeah, so I'm like, oh, no, no, you don't leave pee. You got to, you know, wash it. You need to dilute it. <laughs> Something to think about. Uh, so if you plan to come to Japan with the dog, just uh, please keep in mind where it's marking its territory, and if you can, just dilute wherever you can. <laughs> dilute, not pollute. <laughs> That's it. All right. Okay, so um, I do have two stories. One's just really quick. It's the um, Demon Slayer that they're actually going to have another – they're going to have – they're teaming up with Universal Studios Japan to bring a full body experience. What that includes, no one really knows for sure yet, but it's pretty much you can experience doing like the moves and things like that. It's a lim it's a temporary setup. It's happening next year, starting from September until I forgot when, but it's a temporary thing. Not many people know exactly what's going on. All they know is Demon Slayer universal studios japan and you can probably control stuff with your body i guess <laughs> okay yeah you know there could be they have a sword and you know wind reaction or splash i, I know the characters do breathing and there's elemental nature and a pretty pretty cinematic action so i'm yeah i no, I'm sure they'll do something interesting with it. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of curious on what they will say once it's like fully announced. But yeah, this is like a pre-announcement for when that when we get more information, we could continue on talking about it. Yeah, um, we we made a Inside Japan Culture Corner video covering Kimetsu no Yaiba Demon Slayer last year. It was the most popular product. And it still continues to be pretty popular to this day. So I'm sure they'll get lots of people to check out USJ. All right. Okay, so for my last story, mm. I in Toyota City in Aichi, okay. there was a man. He was really drunk. And so normally people just do some random stuff when they're drunk. This guy, he decided to clean his house while he was drunk, okay. which is nothing wrong with that. Sure. However, he found a drone that he owned, and he just tested it out. He was like, I wonder if this thing still works. Okay. It did still work, and so since it worked, he decided to test it out. And so he was testing it out outside. It crashed into a neighbor's window, and the man found out, hey, you can't do droning while drunk. Okay. <laughs> Drinking and droning is a big no-no, apparently, because that is a new law that came out in Japan this year. This year. Brand new law. Brand new law. And he didn't know that, so he was arrested. So I thought it was really interesting that you can't, like, I never thought about it. Like, hey, I'm going to drink a few beers and you know fly this drone didn't think that would be illegal but I don't know did you know about this or anything I didn't know about that like public intoxication isn't illegal in Japan you can drink and be in public which is good but they are really strict drinking and driving like the acceptable blood alcohol limit is like nominal you know, in the U.S., you get your driver's license. It's like, well, if you're 200 pounds, you can have three drinks before it's illegal. Right. Whereas in Japan, it's like, if you've had any done, any alcohol, you're done. Yeah, I think so, it was 0. 
one or zero zero one. It's, it's a fraction it is, of what's of it, what's fine in the U.S. Yeah, so it, it's like it's insane. So you cannot have any alcohol while driving in Japan, but it turns out you can't really have alcohol while <laughs> driving a, a piloting a drone. I guess you are <laughs> operating a motor vehicle. So yeah, and yeah, so. I feel sorry for that man, cause. Pretty unfortunate. Yeah, cause he didn't know the rules. But then again, yeah, you kind of had to feel sorry for the guy. But at the same time, sure. I guess no, I I I could totally see this happening in America. Well, I mean, if, if it had if it hasn't happened already. <laughs> sure. <So. laughs> Um, speaking of getting arrested, I, I saw a story recently, um, a couple months ago, we did a video of the Olympic torch coming through Utsunomiya, trying to promote the Olympics and an athlete and sponsors would get people excited. Um, so we live in Tochigi and the neighboring prefecture, Ibaraki. Uh, it seems one woman was not very excited for it, and she decided to bring a water pistol, and when the parade comes by, she screams, stop the Olympics, and tries to shoot out the Olympic torch with her water pistol. Um, she was arrested for obstructing business operations or interfering with something and this 50 year old woman yeah at least spent a little time in jail due to her uh, actions yeah I, I did hear about that I, now that you mentioned that I was like yeah I did hear about that and then some people were questioning what was she thinking because that water pistol was not going to do it was a water pistol like think like imagine a water a squirt gun pretty much <laughs> and so <laughs> i can't i can't really imagine that doing anything but i guess um just for people to know why she didn't want the olympics to happen is because of covid that was the main thing yeah i think you know usually tokyo on a good day has about 500 new cases and then on a bad day, it's a thousand, but maybe now with the Olympics, it's a couple thousand. It's a bit of an uptick. So maybe 80% of Japan doesn't really support the Olympics, according to at least one poll. Um, so yeah, it's a hot button issue here. Yeah, especially since uh, summer vacation started for kids as well, so that might also add to the increase of like cases as well. And uh, uh, vaccine rollout with ten percent of the population vaccinated at most, <laughs> yeah, doesn't really help either. No, no. So, anyways. It is what it is, and, you know, I think when people see Japanese people doing well, they're excited for that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, a couple years ago when I heard the Olympics were coming to Japan, we made a video on how we donated old cell phones to, to help make the medals, which are recycled. Like, I was excited to cover the Olympics, whereas now my excitement is a bit lower than I thought it would have been five years ago yeah i i completely understand that i feel the same way <laughs> but yeah i think i think that was a good story so thank you for bringing a story this time this sounds really good if you want to hear more stories from derek just please let us know i really enjoyed it and so um if you have any questions comments you can leave those or any stories that you would like to share please leave that in the comment or you could contact us on twitter or there are various ways of contacting us, but um, thank you very much for watching, and we will see you in the next video. See you. Bye.